This is the first case that I'm going to show you the back side of the case and it definitely won't be the last one because we're expecting NV5 and NV9 from Fantex. Now today we're going to talk about Fantex NV7, the picture perfect case that has seamless connection on the tempered glass so it doesn't have any poles in the middle and it doesn't flex that much on the top so basically that's expected because we can always expect high quality material from Fantex when it comes to production and everything else. Now right here as you can already see this is the back side of the case and you have the tempered glass on the front. On the side you also have a huge tempered glass panel and at the back you have one smaller than uh, normal, well basically smaller than you're used to, uh, panel that covers up the power supply, cables, SSDs and everything else. So what's it all about with this case? You can really pack up loads of stuff inside and we'll get to that part later on when we discuss detailed specifications and features. But this case was designed in terms of giving you a possibility to rearrange the cables at the back and having a perfect case from each corner, from each side, from each panel. This is what they did, this is what they actually managed and as you can see this is the power supply cable, I don't need here more cables currently but as you can see it's nicely tucked and going throughout the, these grills at the back. Now since this is one of the main features, we have more of them of course, but this is one of the main features, let's start with that. So this is how you open the back side. This is how you connect all the cables, basically you plug in everything that you need and you have these canals right here that hold the cable steady. It won't happen anything in terms of cable popping out because it has some sort of a grips that when you push the cable in it it basically sticks inside and won't get out unless you actually take it out from the cable canals. Right here at the bottom we also have a Velcro tie which is used for the HDMI and DisplayPort cables coming out from the GPU because you don't have those canals right here and then when we finally go to the bottom part you have more canals, loads of them so you can separate each cable individually and make it actually look quite nice so when you close it up there's literally nothing here there's nothing blocking the panel to be closed there's just perfect Right here you have an opening where you actually open the side door, the back door and there are more stuff here. So at the back you also have a drain port, at the top you have a fill port if you decide to go with a custom loop. There is also a rubber grommet here that you could pull your cables and make it even better. So if you manage to squeeze the cables through that hole you can even hide the cables and let them go from the outside from the back side making this totally unnecessary in terms of having completely clean case from each side not having any cables. Now since we're at this side right here you have two thumb screws holding the tempered glass, you have two thumb screws holding the top panel, you have one screw holding the panel right here at the back for two 120 millimeter fans and you have another thumb screw right here at the bottom that holds the bottom grill for your fans as a chimney effect. Now the whole case is tilted by certain degrees so you get really nice airflow and here at the back you have a dust filter covering the whole bottom part giving you quite nice uh, I would say uh, peace of mind when it comes to uh, dust at the bottom. Uh, discussing the dust this is the only dust filter in the entire case because we have perforated steel on all sides when we're talking about the fans including the part where the power supply is and uh, you're already used to Fantex fine mesh because uh, they are so small that they block the dust but they're big enough to create nice airflow through the chassis. So since we're talking about the chassis I can't even this is so uh, heavy basically that I can't even switch it around. The bottom part where you can place the fans uh, is connected with the thumb screw. When you remove the thumb screw, just uh, slide it on the right side towards the front part of the case and take it out. This way you can uh, place the fans at the outer side of the case, outside of the case. At the top we, we don't have that option, 
but you have really loads of space to basically uh, place uh, the radiator and the fans. Since we're at the top, I checked it out quite uh, closely in terms of uh, the thickness of the radiator and basically what you can do, you can go with the thickest radiator that you can find and add a push-pull combination and you'll still have enough space because, well, there's loads of space at the top and it won't even block the rear fans and the side fans. So you don't have to worry about that. You can go with really thick radiator and just don't care about anything at all. Now, when it comes to fan configuration, what you could do is uh, rear uh, two 120, top three 120, uh, side four 120, and bottom three 120. Or at the bottom, you can go with three 140. When we're talking about radiators, top 360, rear 240, bottom 360, and two or 280, and the side is 360. Unfortunately, the side can't take the 480 because it's just enough to place uh, 4120 fans. So you don't have that additional space that you need for the tubes. Uh, but regardless to that, 360 is quite enough, especially if you add bottom 360, side 360, top 360, and of course, rear uh, 240. GPU length can go up to 450 millimeters and you have clearance when we're talking about the white 185 millimeters not touching uh, the side part where the fans are or the radiator is uh, the power supply can go up to 255 millimeters it supports atx micro atx mini itx ssi ceb uh, and e atx up to 277 millimeters now placing the motherboard inside is a bit um, different than usual because uh, let me just show you with the power on button first. Uh, as you can see, you have those lines above and on the side of the motherboard. And this is quite a nice feature, actually, I would say, because it gives additional light. And if you decide to place your motherboard with them, you can't because they have to be removed. And it's quite easy. Basically, you don't have to worry about anything. First, you have to remove the top one, uh, just sliding it out. It's fairly easy, just slide it out and it disconnects automatically from the connection where you use it to control. The side one actually has a thumb screw at the back, which you do have to remove. And after that, you just slide it to the bottom part and pop it out. That's all there is to it. Then you have enough clearance to place the motherboard, connect all the cables and do everything that you need to do later on. I would suggest placing either the fans or the radiator first on the side and then place the side LED strip that is on the plastic hanger. And the cool thing is that you can adjust it. So if you go with the E-ATX, you have to twist it so you get more height because of the 24 pin. Or if you go with the standard ATX motherboard, you can just use it normally as it was uh, default uh, when it arrived inside the case and that'll be all. So quite easy. After that, you place the top part. The power supply is actually quite uh, interesting. So what you get inside this case is standard, I would say, uh, white of Fantex cases, but you get a bit of a height and uh, the height is designed this way because you have the power supply at the back above the motherboard and you might think this might be an issue when we're talking about cooling and stuff like that but the power supply actually gets enough air here at the back and it can exhaust quite nicely through the perforated steel the back side is designed quite outstanding because it has loads of space for cable management and i'm not just saying this because the case is big but you also have additional wel Velcro tie to adjust the 24 pin to go straight as it is right here. You have additional Velcro tie to adjust the cables from the GPU to go straight inside where you can connect them. Then we have three additional Velcro ties uh, that hold the cables straight down. And of course we have two additional Velcro ties for the backplate of the, well, it's not an actual backplate of the motherboard, but uh, it's a plate behind the motherboard. You have two of those which are also uh, on the hangers and basically you use, you can untie them with the thumb screw. When we're talking about storage, you can uh, place two 3.5 uh, inch hard drives or one 3.5 inch if all SSD positions are used. 2.5 inch SSDs, six positions. 
uh, two if both hard drives are used so it all depends so basically you can go with one hard drive and six uh, 2.5 inch SSDs or you can go with two hard drives and two 2.5 inch SSDs which is uh, I would say quite all right when we're talking about connections we have one USB 3.2 generation 2 type C two USB 3.0 we have our DRGB mode DRGB color DRGB speed and DRGB channel button we have power button uh, and microphone and headphone combo jack so that means it's for pole there is a possibility to mount the gpu vertically now the distance when we're taking into consideration the side fans and when they start to get in the way of a gpu for instance if you have such long gpu is 65 millimeters which gives you quite nice space for placing fans and the radiator and still having a normal long size GPU without a doubt. So as you can see there is uh, no uh, fixture here on the side because the tempered glass really connect perfectly and it looks outstanding as you can see from the close-ups which is really nice and I do have to admit I was a bit worried on the flexing on the top but it's not that uh, drastical and basically you won't be uh, standing on top of it and pressing it constantly when you place the tempered glass there's no flexing whatsoever movement of the tempered glass is quite easy as you can see the pegs go inside the case and you just slide it on the front the same thing goes on the front tempered glass and uh, that's basically it now for the results we have AIDA 64 extreme edition uh, running with uh, glacier 1 360 mp uh, on the amd ryzen 9 7900x 3d uh, full load so system stability test we have 86 degrees celsius on the processor and you know how it goes uh, the clock speed went up to 4775 megahertz which is i think this is the best score so far because we have quite nice intake i do have to say three at the bottom four on the side and the outtake is here at the top and here at the rear and the gpu is actually 65 degrees celsius which is the lowest that we could have get from PNY RTX 4080 Virto Epic X RGB. So I would say the thermals are quite outstanding, but let's run the Cinebench R23. So the thermals in next 10 scores were 80 degrees Celsius on 7900X3D. Clock speed went up to 4950 megahertz, which is wow. And then the scores, the lowest one, and basically the first one was 26,184. The lowest after that was 26,288, but that was the third. And then we have just basically going above 300s and uh, two going above 400. So the biggest, the, the highest score was 26,459. I would say these scores really show that uh, this case can perform in terms of giving en enough airflow through the entire case because this case creates a chimney effect but it also has additional on the side and all in all I'm quite satisfied with the results uh, in Cinebench R23. As you can see the case is looking just outstanding and even the top cover here the top part where it uh, interlocks with the tempered glass um, is really nice in terms of it hides the slimmer radiators but if you go with the thicker ones and you go with a push-pull combination you can go right to here somewhere i think you might be blocking the rear fan the top rear fan which uh, is basically the only negative thing if i could call it a negative thing so if you want a perfect airflow and uh, you place a much thicker radiator and uh, then you'll be blocking this one uh, the only thing is that when you're placing a radiator here at the back and you're placing a thicker radiator at the top i would eventually suggest placing the tubes running on the bottom part so yeah guys outstanding case really outstanding quality all in all looking really sharp really nice from all sides uh, the back side is outstandingly organized with the velcro ties and everything that you could do with the uh, uh, organizing the cables enough for your additional storage if you're not only using uh, m.2 ssds you can go with six 2.5 inch ssds i'm not going to even mention the hard drives uh, so yeah and all in all 
brilliant case brilliant design i didn't expect this one uh, to be so good i did expect loads of stuff but i didn't expect it to be this good that'll be all for today guys i can't wait for future parts uh, arriving from fantex in terms of uh new cases that they announced on computex 2023 and you'll see the boot tour coming quite shortly because this one is uh, really really interesting and uh, you'll see some new cases you'll see the nv7 as well uh, but you'll see some new cases new aios new fans that i haven't covered on uh, the channel so far and that'll be all for today guys so thank you for watching don't forget to check the link below for the nv7 glacier 1 360 mp and finally don't forget to subscribe hit the like button notification bell so you don't miss future content and including the boot tour for fantex that's all Thanks. Bye-bye.